Hello and welcome to the next coding tutorial. My name is Bogdan and in this tutorial I would like to answer this important question. Do you really need a Babel? I am sure that you know what Babel is and what Babel does. But I am also sure that most of you don't know that in most cases you can go on without Babel. Interested? Let's get started. Ok, before answering this question, let's quickly recap what is Babel and how it works. Babel is JavaScript compiler and its job is to compile JavaScript code that is written using modern JavaScript features such as arrow functions, destructuring, rest, spread operators, let, const and so on, down to ES5. And ES5 is supported by most browsers in the world. Let's look at following diagram. Let's suppose that there is a browser and there is a server. And JavaScript files are located on the server. And when browser downloads HTML document, it looks for references for JavaScript files and then downloads JavaScript files. And if specific JavaScript file that is downloaded from the server is written using advanced features, ES6 plus features, and if browser doesn't support some or all of those features, then it will simply throw an error when JavaScript engine will parse JavaScript file. That is the problem. And if you want to avoid such mistakes on the browser side, you need to perform following action. You need to take JavaScript code on the server and compile it down to ES5. Remove error functions, remove the structuring, remove REST spread operators, remove ESS class and so on. And make it compatible with old browsers. And when browser without ES6 support will request file from the server, server will send him ES5 version without any ES6 features. And now when browser will process this file, it will not throw any errors and code will be executed correctly. That is a result of compilation of ES6 plus features down to ES5. Ok, let's look now at the browser market share. And this data is of end of 2018, when I am recording this tutorial. And you see that share of Google Chrome, most popular browser, is almost 60%. And this share is of all browsers in the world. Share of Internet Explorer is around 3%. And again, those numbers are numbers of all users in the world, including mobile browsers. That's why you see here such browser as Opera. And it includes Opera Mini, that is heavily used in Africa. Ok, let's move on and now let's discuss browser support of modern JavaScript features. When I say modern, I mean features that were introduced starting from ECMAScript 2015. Ok, there are two browsers with low support of modern JavaScript features. And they are Internet Explorer 11 and Opera Mini. And here you see global market share by those two browsers. Yes, they are still in use. Other browsers support most features of ECMAScript. It means that when you compile ES6 plus code down to ES5, you support minority of the users. And global percentage of those users is less than 10%. Again, that is a global data of all users around the world. And in most cases, for most modern applications, this number is even less than 1%. But you may ask me, why is it less than 1%? Let me show you this now. Let's switch to the browser. And first, uh, here is a link babeljs.io, where you can read about Babel and try it in action. Current version at the moment of recording of this tutorial is 7. Here you can click on the link try it out. And here you see example of the conversion. 
This piece of code is JSX code. JSX is used in React, and React is the most popular front-end framework in JavaScript. And JSX allows you to combine HTML syntax and JavaScript syntax. And here on this line, first line, you see this part that is written in HTML and it is assigned to the variable element. And also you see that variable element is declared using const and const was introduced in ES6. And on the right pane you see converted result. And in this converted code you don't see any HTML tags. So this part was converted to this function. Ok, let's write something else here and let's create for example anonymous function expression and assign it to the variable. Let's declare a variable using const, const my function, equal sign, parentheses, so no parameters here, fat arrow, and here let's simply log to the console, hello from Babel, like this. And here on the right you see converted code. And instead of const you see here var, and instead of anonymous function expression, you see here regular function. And instead of implicit return here, you see here function body and explicit return keyword. Ok, if you want, you can play with Babel yourself and uh, try other features. Now let's move on to another website. Here's URL for it. And on this website, you can compare support of different features of ECMAScript by different browsers. Here at the top you can navigate through different versions of ECMAScript. If I will click on ECMAScript 5, I will see this list of features. And you see that most of them, for example, array methods, such as index of, every sum for each map and so on, are supported by almost all browsers, including Internet Explorer 11. But if I will click on 6th version, this one, you will see that uh, such features as REST parameters, for example, are not supported by Internet Explorer 11 or Kong 4.14. I can also click on 2016+, plus, and here you see combined list of the features that were introduced after ES6. For example, if I will scroll down, you will see such feature as object rest spread properties. And this feature was introduced in 2018. Let's now try this in action. Let me open console of the browser, F12, and here let me first declare variable, const object A. It will be equal to object, I will use object literal notation, and here let's add one property to this object, x will be 10. Enter and now let's create copy of the object A. I will use following syntax, simply const object B equal sign object A. And now let's add one property to object B. Object B dot Y equal to true. And now if I will try to access object A, I will get object with two properties. It means that uh, object A was modified as well. That's because object in JavaScript is reference type. And if you change one of the variables that point to the same object in memory, other variables will be changed too. Now let's try to use new feature of ECMAScript that was introduced in 2018, REST spread object properties. And now let's add one more variable, const object C and here let's use following syntax. Object literal and here let's use spread operator, three dots and name of the object A. Like this. Enter and I cannot get any error. It means that this feature is supported by my browser. Now let's try to add one more property to object C. Object C dot Z equal to false. If I will access object C now, I will get object with three properties, x, y and z. But if I will access object A now, I will still get an object with two properties, x and y. 
and now object C and object A point to different places in memory. And you see that object A was not changed. It still has only two properties, X and Y. It means that using this new feature, this one, you can create copy of the object. But please take a note that uh, you create true copy only of the first level properties. If some properties contain other object as values, those values will be shallow copied as before. Okay, with this example, I wanted to demonstrate you that my browser, Google Chrome, supports most modern features of ECMAScript. And I have demonstrated you one of the recent features, REST spread properties of the object. And I don't require Babel or other compiler in order to make browser execute this code. Let's now look at other website. It is called caniuse.com. And here you can check support of specific feature among all browsers in the world. For example, I can type here arrow function. And here you see that arrow functions are supported by 87.57% of all browsers in the world. And here you can also check which versions of the browsers support this feature. We can also check other feature, for example, LED. And LED is supported by 90% of browsers. Let's check, for example, classes. Type ES6 class. And ES6 classes are supported by 87% of the browsers. And here in the table, you see that uh, most of those features are not supported by Internet Explorer 11 and Opera Mini. And that's what I have told you before. But now let's try to do the following. Click on the settings here. And here we can connect Google Analytics account. And you can take data about your users from your Google Analytics account. And caniuse.com will show you coverage of requested feature among all users that use your application. Let me show you this now. I will click on the import here and uh, I will access my Google Analytics account here. And here I will choose Google Analytics profile. And uh, I will choose this one. Click on all my visitors. And here you can choose range and uh, by default you can import uh, data from last month or you can choose other custom range. In my case, this Google Analytics account is uh, connected to my Udemy profile and uh, it gathers statistics of all students that watch my courses at Udemy. So let's click import data. And here now you see which versions of the browsers are used by my students. For example, Google Chrome 69 is used almost by 30% of the users. Next comes Chrome 70, it takes about 22%. And in total, Google Chrome covers about 60% of all users. If I will look, for example, at uh, Internet Explorer 11, coverage among all my students is less than half percent. Let's try to find also Opera Mini. It is called actually Opera Mobile. Here is one record and here is one more record. And you see that uh, this uh, version of the browser is used by one or two of my visitors. Its usage is uh, less than 0.1%. Okay, let me scroll up and close this tab. And now I need to reload this page. And now here in this corner, you also see data for all my visitors. And now you see that ESC classes are supported by 98% of my visitors. So global support is 87%, 88. And 98 browsers of my visitors support this feature. Let's try to find again data about arrow functions. Type arrow here. And now here you see number again close to 98. It means that almost 99% of browsers of my visitors support such modern features as arrow functions, ESS classes and so on. 
let's try one more feature, for example, REST operator. And here you see a gain number almost 98. Okay, if you have access to any Google Analytics account that uh, gathers data about usage of your application, you can try the same. But I am sure that you will get almost the same numbers. Because most modern applications are used by, let's say, modern users that have modern browsers, modern computers, and so on. That's why coverage is so high. And uh, this shows you that, in fact, you can avoid using Babel if support of modern ECMAScript features among your visitors is as high as mine. Let me now show you one more thing. Let's get back to the console of the browser, clear here console, and let's try to use here J6 syntax. For example, const header equal sign HTML tag h1 hello from JS6 three exclamation marks and closing h1 tag. And let's try to execute this. Enter. And I immediately get error unexpected token. That's what I have told you before. JS6 is not supported by browsers, including Google Chrome, Safari, and so on, doesn't matter. Because JS6 is not part of the ECMAScript standard. And that's why now we finally can answer initial question. Do we really need a Babel? And answer is following. You must always use Babel or other transpiler if you use non-ECMAScript features like JS6. Because JS6 is not part of the standard, that's why it is not supported by the browsers. And we have just tried it. But please note that if you use JS6 in your React applications, you don't necessarily need to use such complicated compiler as Babel. You can go on with other simple transpiler that will simply take JS6 code and transpile it to JavaScript. But what if you don't use J6 syntax, but use such features as arrow functions, REST, spread operators, and so on? Answer in this case is following. You could avoid using Babel if more than 99% of users of your application support all features that you use in your JavaScript code. And I have shown you how to check this. You can connect your Google Analytics account with caniuse.com and verify coverage of features among your users. But what about rest of users, 1 or 2%? When those browsers will load code from your server and start to execute it, if they will find unsupported feature, they will simply throw an error. In order to avoid that, you can initially load small JavaScript file that will check feature support. And if specific features are not supported by the browser, you can tell user that the uh, browser should be updated. Or even you can download compiled version only for those selected browsers. And modern browsers can download uncompiled version. That is pretty easy to check, but it's a subject for other tutorial. For now, you know answer to this question. And you know that you don't need necessarily use Babel anytime when you use modern features such as REST, spread operators, and so on. In most cases, you can go on without transpiler. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, thumbs up. If no, thumbs down. Please subscribe to my channel, share this video, and see you in the next coding tutorials. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.